What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan and I'll be your host. For today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to overlay an animated GIF over a still image, assuming this GIF has a transparent background. Now, this is an update to a previous tutorial that I made on the topic, except that this one, well, as an update, is going to offer more information and a solution to the previous tutorial's problem. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about or have not seen the previous tutorial, don't worry, I'll go over everything in this video, and then we can get into the entire process. Timestamps are available in the description below, so you don't have to actually watch every single part of this video or skip through to find the parts you want. Let's say you have an animated GIF with a transparent background, as you can see here on the screen, the cat jumping. Uh, just go ahead and import your GIF or your layers if you have it as an image sequence. In my case, I will import it as an image sequence by going up to File, Open as Layers, not Open, but Open as Layers. I will make my way to where my frames are, select everything and import. Now, it is important to note that GIMP reads the animation for animated GIFs from the bottom layer up. So the first image of your animation is the bottom layer and the top one is the last frame of your animation. In this case, I can see that the order is inversed for me. So I'll go ahead and change that by going to Layers, Stack and Reverse Layer Order. That will flip the layers around. I'll import my background, move it all the way at the bottom so it's the first layer. I'll do the rescaling and arranging everything real quick so that we can continue on with the tutorial, all right? So yeah, and there we go. So now I have my background at the bottom of my frame. So the trick from the previous tutorial that you learned here, if you want to blend the background with each of these layers, simply go to Filter, Animation, hit Blend, set the intermediate frames down to one. Unfortunately, we can't go to zero. Uncheck Loop and make sure to leave Max Blur Radius on zero and press OK. Now GIMP will merge the background image with each one of your layers, but in doing so, it creates these ghosted layers. You see how the image is semi-transparent? So every second layer has this transparency. If I go up to Filter, Animation, Playback, you'll see it's the same issue we had in the previous tutorial. You have this ghosting effect. Now, if you don't want that, which I do not, Last time I said to delete them manually, but thanks to a comment left by Erdim Yilmaz, I hope I'm saying your name right, but yes. We now have a script that we can run. Uh, if we go up to filters, Python foo, and open the Python console that GIMP ships with. It's pretty simple. Here's the code. I have it here with the comment. You simply have to copy and paste this command, uh, this script in the console. Uh, it is available down in the description of the video. So I'll go ahead and paste it, hit enter twice. And you can see here that every second frame has been deleted. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, etc. And we're left with the desired frames. So if I go back to filter, animation, playback, hit play, we have our animation. Now you could export the GIF as is, but let's go ahead and optimize the GIF for a better export. So to optimize the GIF for export, we're going to do a couple of things. One of them would be to reduce the overall size of the image. Another one is to go in image and change the mode to indexed. But before we do that, the first thing we'll do is go to filters, animation, optimize difference. You do have optimize for GIF, but that rescales your image. Um, so GIF takes a lot of liberty in what it does to your image. If you do not want that and you only want to optimize the, the difference, well, you'll see what it does right now. Click on Optimize Difference. For those of you who have seen the previous tutorial, this will simply eliminate every pixel that is the same as the pixels in the previous image. And it will replace the ones that are different. This reduces the overall amount of information in each layer, thus making each layer lighter, thus making the final GIF export lighter. GIMP will create a new project tab here with the new file, as you can see. Now, um, we get this neat little information added to the name of each one of our layers. This here, uh, the milliseconds, controls the timing of each frame and the combine or replace would control how the layers mix together. Uh, with this, you can, let's say I want this layer to last a little longer, more than 100 milliseconds. I simply have to switch this to 200 milliseconds. It takes a thousand milliseconds to have one second. So you modify your GIF however you please. I'll do these simple modifications for mine. 
and there we go now all you have to do is go up to file export or simply hold ctrl e or export as shift ctrl e navigate to where you'd like to export your gif i'll go ahead and change this to 06 for this one now once you hit export you'll get this little pop-up menu uh, first things first interlace uh, from what I could find about it, same things from the previous tutorial, interlace means if you share this on the internet and someone has a slow internet connection, interlace will allow the GIF to load a lower resolution version of the GIF as the full resolution loads. So basically, it makes it load faster, starting at a lower resolution. Uh, the GIF comment that is in metadata, I'll leave this as is. And now if you're exporting this as an animation, make sure to check on as animation here. You can check or uncheck loop forever. I'll leave loop forever on for mine. If you don't want the delay here, if you want to unify the delay for all the frames, you just want to change the number, you can do it here by changing this number to whatever you want and then checking use delay into it above for all frames. If you'd like to change the mixing of the layers, how they mix together, you can do this as well by changing from this drop down to combine or replace and then check use disposal entered above for all frames. I'll leave it as is as I like the timing here and it's supposed to be on combine. Let's hit export, you can export the GIF and now if I go to where I exported 06, right? See it's a very tiny little GIF and it's still 2400 by 2400, 2400 by 2400 in size, and yet the GIF is very small. So that's it for today's tutorial. Now, of course, if I wanted to crop this or scale down, I would first do a canvas crop. So controlling the canvas size, right? And then I would scale down the image by scale image. And let's say I'll drop this to 800, which is a nice size for GIFs, right? Heck, we can even go with 1600 by 1600 and scale. Of course, you want to make sure that the first frame is um, at the size of the image. So right click on it and go to layer to image size. There you go. You can export again, replace the previous one, replace or leave all the settings as is. And there we go, even smaller than before. And we have the little pause at the end, the little pause in the beginning, as indicated here. Bonus part of this tutorial, if ever you're working inside of GIMP directly, and how I usually work is I'll create a layer group, and inside of that layer group, I'll place my line work, shading, and colors. Okay, so let's say you're working with this sort of format, and you'd like to convert this or you'd like to add a background even if it's this white background with this box right you'd like to merge this background layer with each one of these layers well it's actually the very same principle simply go up to filter animation and blend now if this option is not available it could be due to something such as let's go here if i grab this background you have these options here to lock the pixels lock the position and size or lock the alpha channel. If any one of these is checked on for any one of your layers, then it will not allow it to blend the layers together. So let's say I go to background and I lock uh, the movement and position, right? Go to animation, blend. One, loop checked off, max blur. Get a tip and then you'll get an error message. Okay, that's the first thing. So you don't want any of these to be locked. Uh, the other thing is you want, well, for exporting as a GIF, you'll want to make sure that the precision, the image precision is on 8-bit integer and not 16, 32, or any of the other, of the other ones. So I can go ahead and convert. Uh, last but not least, normally if you'd want to reduce the amount of information in your layers to make the, the final export lighter, you can always go to image mode and switch from RGB to index, right? Right now it's not allowing us to do so. This is because we have layer groups here. So what can we do about this? Well, first things first, let's go ahead and blend our layers together. So go to animation, blend It's the same principle. It's going to convert each layer group into a single layer. Now, of course, the blending option uh, doubles the amount of layers that we have. 
And so I'll go ahead and grab our script again. Go to Filter, Python Foo, Console, Paste, Enter, Enter. There you go, it's going to delete every second layer, as you can see here. If index percentage 2, so every second layer. And there we have it. And then from here, we can go to Image, Mode, and switch to Index. Um, index basically, instead of using the whole range, the whole RGB range, it's simply going to use uh, specific chosen colors, like a, like a limited color palette for all your colors. Now, this number typically starts at 255, but since what I'm working with is fairly simple and does not have any gradient, I'll stick to 32. If you are working with gradients, I recommend turning on dittering, so color dittering, switch it from none to Floyd Steinberg normal or either one of these, but the normal I find works fine. It adds a bit of noise to your gradients so you don't get any banning. So let's go ahead and convert. It will reduce the amount of colors that we have per layer. And basically, it's the same steps at this point. If you want to reduce the amount of pixel information, simply go down to optimize difference. GIMP will do its thing, reduce the amount of pixels um, per layer. And then we can adjust the timing if we want to and simply export it as a GIF. If you'd like to convert, for example, all of your layer groups into solid planes, but you don't want to mix a background, right? Then all you'd have to do, for example, I delete this background and I'll add this as background, but at the bottom. So a transparent layer as background. And if we go up to filter, animation, blend, you'll end up with these frames, right? With transparent background, fully animated, single layers. Of course, we still have to clean up our layer stack. So we go to Python Foo, the console, paste the command, enter twice, reduce the frames, and there you go. You could export this as an Aura file. If you go and export as an Aura file, it will export all of the layers together, right? So you'll have like an image sequence thing going on. And that's about it, really. There you have it. This is the one that we just uh, optimized the difference. Simply have to export and we're done. Or modify the values here, however you like it. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Jonathan. This has been Nuxtux Creative Studios teaching you how to overlay a GIF with transparent background over a still image. Uh, if you like this video or learn anything new, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and you'd like to see more of this content, go ahead and click subscribe. You can also hit the bell icon if you wish to, but you know, it's up to you. If you did not like this video, well, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Anyways, thank you for watching. My name is Jonathan. I'll see you next time. Good day.